good morning good afternoon so today we'll go through about uh, microservice security and how it is implemented there are different ways to implement it uh, one of them is to use a kickoff integration uh, that is publicly available that is open source so you can use that so let us understand a uh, whole integration of a security with the microservices using a key clock okay so i'll be creating a couple of more videos because it's a huge topic so i'll try to cover one by one uh, so let us understand uh, what are the different topics which are going to cover in the next videos as well so these are the high level topics what we have so one is we need to understand setup and the configuration second one is like how do you generate an access token then how do you integrate that access token or generating access token with the spring boot app and what are the different tokens we have like access token refresh token scopes and what is mean by that how it is used and everything and what are the different types of grant apps we have client credentials password and other things so those all things we will learn one by one in this tutorial so let us move ahead with how to uh, set up the key clock integration let us understand that first on the basic okay so you can go through the key clock implementation directly key clock is nothing but it's an IAM solution which is publicly available, nothing but an open source. So if you go to that official website, so if you see there's a key clock download. So the latest version is download. Currently I am using the downloaded latest version only. So you can use a previous version as well. But there are slight changes in the how you configure in the previous version. But I, I thought to go with the latest one. So so this is the download one with respect to your system operating system you can download those SHAs and zip files and everything so once you download that so once you download that you just go to that particular downloaded location okay and unzip that file like I'll show you the how it is unzip that file so what we did so you can see this is the unzip I did I am using a 17 I have just unzipped that file this is the structure of folder structure like this this is slightly different from 16.0 so you can see all these uh, client and everything so I'll tell you how, how you, you have to run it. So when you go, so before the 17, we used to run like standalone .sh with, with respect to bat file uh, for the Windows and SH for the Unix other <coughs> OS files. So but now I'm using the currently 17th version. So now they are changes like based on your environment, like uh, it's a dev environment or a non-prod environment or a prod environment setup for them. So whenever you want to start with that, so you have to go to the particular bin location you have to go to the particular bin location just and you just have to type that kb kc.bat.startdev so if you dot here kc.bat here so you can see script file as well as the bat file, batch file as well so you can just dev did <coughs> if you did that start dev if you did it will start for the dev enrollment that is nothing but a sorry that is nothing but a non-prod enrollment so if it is a prod, if you directly start only with kc.bat, it will start, it will think as a production environment. There are mandatory configuration which we need to do for production. So that is available here. So I'll not go into much of the details how you set up that uh, kclock server here. So it's, uh, or like how you download rather. So I'll just go through directly. So once you unzip it, once you start it, right? So you will get like this. So you can see uh, many logs here because I performed a few operations. You can just like perform kc bad.startdev so you can just see all the logs here in the command prompt okay so as soon as you open for the first time it will open up for the 8080 port so if you see first time if you open 8080 port it looks similar to like this i just taken a screenshot because i already used it one time so once you create your username and password uh, for the first time then it will not pop up this screen it will redirect to your login screen so first time for the installation you have to create your administrator username and password i just given it as admin and admin for the easy to understand so you can see admin and admin are created so once you created that you can use that admin and admin for login <coughs> so now what happens next so before we get into the creating those actual configuration let us understand what uh, uh, what is the configuration is all about as soon as you log in so you have to create a real m so in click click out word or in the security world they call it as a real m the real m is nothing but a uh, uh, it's a master kind of a, a group where it manages your roles, data, uh, users, clients and everything. So it's it's a kind of a master for you. It's kind of a meta uh, for you. Realm you configure. Inside that you configure your client. Like whatever the how many clients want you can configure. You can have those users associated with the particular client. 
and you can create a roles for that particular client and everything so everything falls under that realm so realm so it will have a client client will have a, a multiple roles multiple users and multiple credentials so however you want to configure those kind of a thing so these are the few simple steps which we need to perform create a realm add a user create a add credentials to user create a client and create create a roles for the client and associate roles for the uh, user okay so this is the simple steps what we wanted to perform for a basic setup okay so let us go through see if you see i already created a one realm so you can see there is a one the realm is already there because that is microservice plus i'll just try to create one more realm like a test project okay just for the demo purpose i'm just trying to create one more here you can see okay okay it's not created because i already added that but that's fine so now it's created a one more project so you can see this is the where it is basic things it's created okay now what we do we will just first is like you have to create a realm that is the super set that is the super that is a master one you can see it okay so you can see all this information we have it here so now what we do as per the next step let's create a uh, uh, user so already i have uh, some users okay so maybe <coughs> for this realms i don't have any user sorry i have a user for other like now you have a test user so what i did is like i'll just take a test user and i have added a test user i had a test user you just create that test user and just add it to the test user okay so what we will do so as per the next step okay now add a credentials to that user so what you do we'll go to here okay so i'll give the password as the same test here so it is the password i'm just setting a password for that user okay so that it is the secured one so i just added a credentials for that user so now if you go to role mapping see by default it has something from the realm okay so what i will do i'll just select what i have created here okay so as of now we do we don't see anything here because i have not created any client for me so i just created a realm so i'll just go to client okay so what i'll do i'll create a new client so all your client is nothing but your your application your your spring boot or any other application which you want to register here or you can give a same name or a different name it's just like uh, you are registering your app here like what i'll do test uh, user or test app i'll give it as a test app so you can see there is a test app test app or oh, test app so i just given as a open id connect as my protocol so i just created it here so your is uh, uh, not valid okay so that is fine so i'll just created it here so you can see i just created here so this is the url i'm just trying to allow everything which comes from the redirect url so you can configure your own url when we, from your app suppose you have some microservices with slash uh, per, uh, running on 8065 you can just configure on that so you can see that see this here so it's open id i'll tell you this is remember this this public and confidential is is very important to con look at it here i'll tell you why it is okay so you can configure as a public and configure as a confidential or a bearer only i'll, I'll explain in the uh, next set why it is there so now if you see what it is there so you all there is no roles and everything so what i'll do i'll add a role kind of like i'll add a uh, uh, admin role okay i'll just add a admin role for this real realm and for this client okay if you see i am just under the client for this realm so what i'll do i'll just go to users now so now user you can see there is already created a user now what i'll do i'll try to do a role mapping now so what you do you created a role you created a user now you have to associate both of them so what i will do so you can just see i have created a test app as my client so you can see already admin role which i created a role i selected that so what happened so whatever the <coughs> user you created as test user that is mapped to the admin role under the client under this client that is nothing but your test app client so this is the basic configuration which is required for you associating the roles and everything okay so authorization enable and everything which you added so whenever you select a, i just want to tell you that whenever you select a confidential so when you select a confidential so your client secret is not required when you are trying to fetch a access token okay but you don't uh, select a confidential it's a public 
then there is a client secret is required for that okay then then well, i'll try to access I'll, I'll show you how it how it works on that okay so if you can see the test app you can see the clients you can see the roles you can details and everything you can see it here so all the more detailed information will be available we will go one through one one by one with installations and everything okay you can see so if you want to access if you want to check and anything on that right one more important thing which i forgot to tell you is that how you see your endpoints how to generate access token how you to generate everything so once you go to your particular realm and click on this whatever the protocol you selected it will be automatically uh, visible here with the new call so you can see there is an authorization endpoint there is a token endpoint there is a uh, validation endpoint there is a user info endpoint so you can get all these endpoints so so we are going to use these endpoints only to get access token and everything in the in the next step okay so this is the, more about how you are setting up your credentials how you are setting up your users how you are setting up your roles and everything okay so you can see there are different types of keys are there how to use them how to configure for the particular user and everything so i'll i'll go these all things step by step i just wanted to cover the basic things what it is available here okay so you can just see i can generate a new keys and certificate import everything we i can do it here so these all concept i'll go one by one so for now uh, i hope you understand just the configuration of a key clock server and how to configure your real client and users and the roles according to that okay thanks thanks a lot in the next video i'll come up with how to generate an access token uh, using a postman after the configuration thank you